Hello again, my YouTube friends. It's Poet WP again. Today, uh, I'm here to share with you not only a poem, but uh, kind of a story about the poem and how I wrote it, and why, and everything. And uh, also uh, a sort of critique and review of other material that um, I feel helped uh, shape my opinion of war, and especially the Vietnam War. Um, this is a simple, the other material I will review is, is just, you know, my opinions on it and how it kind of affected me and, uh, uh, you know, helped me have an outlook on the whole concept of war in general. Um, I'm also going to be showing you this book, The Wall. It's a great book. It's about the Vietnam Wall Memorial. Um, while I'm uh, explaining or uh, telling my, some stories, and also I'm going to be showing this. I'll, you can pause on this and read this. I can't read this because every time I try to read this, it makes me want to break down and cry, honestly. So if you want to read that, you could pause it. Anyway, I'll do that for a few things in this book. Um, I wrote this in high school, way back many, many moons ago. Um, for when in my junior year. Once again, you could uh, pause on that if you want to read it. Um, junior year, I was. You know, at that point, I was full on into my heart, sort of rebellion mode, heavy rebellion. Just learning about a lot of intellectual things and uh, artsy sort of things and literature. And, but I was very rebellious at this point in my life, you know. And uh, I uh, was raised by a, a person who grew up in the Vietnam era and was, uh, you know, largely protested against it and was affected by it. And uh, she taught me that war is something that should be avoided at all costs. She taught me that uh, overall war is an evil thing that should be avoided and that it's something that makes beasts of men and unleashes the gates of hell. Um, and, I, and, and by the time I was like, you know, starting to become an early young teenager in efforts to, in efforts to, uh, you know, she would start letting me well, not in efforts, but she would allow me to watch, you know, rated R movies, some rated R movies, you know, and like Indiana Jones and stuff. But she would also let me watch war movies. And um, during the 80s and the 90s, the war movies were all about Vietnam because that was what it had affected so greatly and harmed the baby boomer generation who were, you know, in full swing in the 80s and 90s. So she would. I, I watched a lot of war movies. I was really interested in war movies as a teenager, and um, they they uh, really revealed the ones I saw revealed the true nature of war. That it's it's horrific. Um, and all these movies I'm about to list are, are excellent, excellent films. I highly recommend them. Uh, movies like Casualties of War, The Iron Triangle, Bat 21, Hamburger Hill, Born on the Fourth of July. Oh my God, Born on the Fourth of July is so sad. It's tragic. It's the story of Ron Kovac. Excellent Oliver, Oliver Stone movie. I love Oliver Stone's films for the most part. He, he's a true master of filmmaking. And he was a combat reporter in Vietnam, Oliver Stone. 
And he also did Platoon. That's another excellent one. So yeah, and Platoon, and Hamburger Hill, born on the 4th of July. Heaven and Earth, another excellent Oliver Stone movie that is just way underrated and powerful. Um, and of course, the classic Full Metal Jacket, The Deer Hunter, and the whole... <laughs> The whole, although it was kind of corny, the Missing in Action series. And of course, uh, you know, the Rambo movies. <laughs> like I said, mentioned earlier, I was such a huge fan of, as everyone was of the age. But the whole message in the Rambo movies were like, the vets were treated like crap. And, uh, you know, when they came home and, you know, they fought for a war that was, you know, pretty much not, well, this, you know, it's was, it was I'll just speak the truth about it. Gulf, Gulf, Gulf of Tonkin was staged. So they got into the Vietnam War under false pretenses to begin with. It was all for capitalism and gain. They would bomb the same damn places over and over again that were like hollow craters. You know, that Operation Rolling Thunder, they would just like lay waste to things multiple times over and over, like, redundantly, that, but for no reason, just to, like, spend more money on bombs. Like, the war was insane. Just, like, and it's the same damn story now with all the crap in the Middle East. Nothing's changed. But, yeah, so I grew up watching these war movies, and they they shaped my opinion of war. And I grew up hearing horror stories from my drunken grandfathers and stories of the stories <laughs> that they used to tell about fighting the Japanese and fighting uh, the Nazis. One, uh, my great aunts, uh, my great uncle, uh, was in the Battle of the Bulge. And he had it rough out there, as you guys know. You've seen the band of brothers, you, uh, you know the Battle of the Bulge. There was no, no picnic. That was a rough, rough time. And then my grandfather, he fought in the Island Wars. In the Island Wars. Uh, New Guinea and around in there, all around those islands. And almost died of dysentery from a mosquito bite. He was a... Uh, Scout and an expert marksman. But, uh, you know, so I grew up hearing more horror stories, watching horrible horror war movies. And uh, also, so, you know, my opinion of war was not, oh, patriotic, let's march to war. The government is right. You know what I mean? I didn't have no naive misconceptions about the wars, especially the wars of the past, what, 60, 70 years, but, you know, Korea, from Korea on, it was questionable whether or not America should have actually gone to war, and the most preposterous of all is when we went to war in the Middle East, and we're still there, going on 19 goddamn years, they have to get out the war machine, people don't care anymore because they don't show us, they have to stop, they have to demand they stop these wars, they can't go on forever. Millions of people have died in the Middle East already. This war machine, it, it, has to, it has to end. So anyway, yeah, I had a very negative opinion about war. Also, I started listening to classic rock when I was like, this is my favorite picture right here. I was my favorite one in the whole book. I am a Vietnam veteran. I like the memorial. And if it makes it difficult to spend, to send people into battle again, I'll like it even more. Yeah. But, so, you know, I had a very different opinion of the war, and I was allowed to see these things. And, um, and I guess most of my classmates hadn't. They were raised by right-wing people. And it didn't help that we were in, like, a huge southern military town. So to be, like, speak out and be anti-war was, like, considered anti-troops. So, like, it was kind of forbidden. So I'm sure most of my classmates had not really heard, had not really even seen any war movies. Especially not the kind of war movies I was talking about. 
And they probably didn't sit around and listen to bands that had huge anti-war messages like Metallica, and which I'm going to share some uh, some of the Metallica lyrics that had a big impact on me uh, to shape the whole anti-war message in my mind early on. Because by the time I was eight, I mean, by the time I was six, see, my, my older brother was super into rock and roll and metal. And he got me into it when I was a, a, a wee uh, tyke. <laughs> so, like, by the time I was six, I was obsessed with Pink Floyd. I still am to this day. Pink Floyd is still my favorite. Pink Floyd, Nine Inch Nails, Tool, Perfect Circle, Marilyn Manson. And all the classic 70s, 80s. I, mean, I like it all. But I was super into metal, you know, like, from, like, 88 on. <clears throat> so I was listening to bands like Metallica and Iron Maiden and and uh, <clears throat> Megadeth, they had like, you know, real extreme anti-war messages. And I was reading the lyrics and like analyzing them and stuff. And, you know, it made sense to me because I have compassion. <laughs> so, yeah, and I'll get to the poem here in a second. But, uh, so, you know, I guess I had a very different outlook than most of the people. So on the day, it was uh, the day before Memorial Day, the teacher said, I want everybody to write a poem uh, for Veterans Day and how Veterans Day makes you feel and what it makes you think about and all that. And all the kids moaned and groaned and were like, oh, man. And I was like, oh, okay, poem for Veterans Day? Sure, no problem. Because at this point, I had already been writing poetry. Uh, I started writing poetry when I was 16. And, uh, you know, and I was, like, 17 at this point, so, like, uh, the book's over. I was, I was 17 at this point. So, uh, you know, I had written, I don't know, like, 40 poems by now. So, I was like, sure. I, I didn't really even care at this point, you know. I was very rebellious at this stage, like I was saying. And I had a whole, you know, kind of embrace of nihilistic sort of point of view. Like, I as much as I was there in high school to participate, I was also there to object. So, you know, everybody went home and wrote their poems, but uh, I wrote my poem, uh, it's, you know, right after she said, oh, we're going to write a poem about the Memorial Day and Veterans Day, what it makes you think about. Well, as soon as she said that, I wrote the poem in like 10 minutes, just like didn't think nothing about it. Didn't really even... You know, it just, you know, came out of me naturally because, you know, I was very familiar with this topic and I already had a very defined opinion of it all. Uh, so, uh, you know, I just hammered it out. Uh, the, little, the poem in like 10 minutes. Yeah, I guess a lot of them went home and like really struggled. You know, whatever, maybe. Trying to write their poems. And, but then when they came back the next day, Everybody was like, uh, the teacher was like, okay, who wants to read their poems? And then people got up and read their poems. I didn't want to read my poem. I didn't even care. Uh, you know. So, you know, I wasn't going to read my poem. And it wasn't because I was shy or anything or because I didn't want to share what I had to say. It was just because, honestly, I just didn't give a shit. I was 17 years old. I had a lot going on. I didn't care about that. I didn't really even care about the poem. It was just, okay, I'll do it. And in 10 minutes, it's done. And I handed it in. I didn't think anything else about it, really. <laughs> and uh, so then everybody got up there and read their poems. And it was like cheesy, uh, stereotypical, like rhyme scheme, false, like forced rhyme. Uh, and it was all like flag worshiping, patriotic, God is good, God and country, God bless America, the wars are, you know, glorious and whatever the hell, you know bullshit they uh, tried to cram down our throats from birth so that we can be cannon fodder for their uh, imperialist expansion uh you know so that they were all on that tip right and i was like completely like un you know i wasn't even really aware of like the principles behind all this kind of thing or anything it's just like what i was brought up to believe and they were brought up to believe the opposite <clears throat> but you know so I wrote my poem, and at the end of the thing, teacher said, okay, well, there's one person who didn't read a poem that I really wanted to share with you guys because I, it really moved me, and it made me think. 
And I still, at this point, 